If you're on the ASMR side of YouTube, you've more than likely seen a mysterious female that wears a mask over her eyes while dining on large portions of meat, particularly raw meat. I love her work and I've been obsessed with her since day one. The way she made ASMR eating sounds really captivated my attention. For the purpose of this story, I'll refer to her as Kathy. There's something alluring about the way she wears a mask in every single video, only revealing her mouth down to her hands. I revel in the fact that she stays so thin and fit while putting away enough raw meat to feed an army in every video. I can't help but simp over her. I'll admit, I've grown a little bit of an obsession. The way her fingers bathe in the sauce when she dips the meat, and the way the dressing dribbles out the sides of her mouth, it's just mesmerizing. I've never missed a live stream, let alone an upload. I presume most will refer to me as a fanboy due to my excessive promotion of Kathy on social media. I would like to think that she is where she is success-wise thanks to my devotion. I know a thing or two about marketing and advertising, so spreading the word on her channel had come second nature to me. I noticed her channel had been elevating since I shared her content with my followers. I've watched her subscribers escalate to nearly a million and couldn't be prouder. Her views have been ascending since I followed her. Coincidence? I don't think so. But as of late, speculations from her comment section have noticed her health declining. The latest live stream nearly threw me in a state of panic. <laughs> Hurry up, you need to eat faster. I could see Kathy forcibly regurgitate her already devoured mouthful of food. To be honest, I felt like vomiting myself while watching, so I left the room to pull myself together. I could almost smell the distinct odor of raw salmon mixed with Kathy's stomach acid. But what people were more concerned about was the voice behind the screen that kept egging her on despite her choking. Nonetheless, the voice eventually went away and Kathy was just gorging in the same manner that we all love and appreciate. I was able to enjoy the rest of the stream, but the comments on the whispering never ceased. A few of them read, Who was that? Is she being forced to do this? Or, I don't think she really wants to eat that. My stomach dropped reading the dissatisfaction <gasps> from her followers. My concern for the success of her channel got worse the next time Kathy went live. This time, there were really dark bruises on her arms and sores on her lips. To my dismay, as though the floodgates had been opened, commenters were coming out of nowhere and pointing out the bruises. I began typing in the chat box to chime in on the whole ordeal saying, Kathy, please cut the feed, darling. You don't look well. Get some help. She must have seen my plea as the feed was cut. I closed my laptop and headed down to my kitchen to hammer down a cold one. The intensity behind the comments section left me feeling parched and in need of a drink or two. Unfortunately, things didn't get better for Kathy, but would only get worse over time. The next live stream, she was chomping on meat as usual. However, one of her teeth crumbled and fell out of her mouth. Again, I couldn't help but feel grossed out, so I had to leave the room for a bit. Put it back in your mouth. As I returned back to the stream, I saw Kathy stuffing her fallen tooth into a raw steak. She lifted the meat to her mouth while trembling. At first glance, I didn't know if she was aware of her actions or not, but then I remember seeing her consciously stuff the tooth in the steak. Again, I couldn't help but feel sick to my stomach, so I stepped out of the room again to take another breather. A voice from behind the camera yelled, HURRY UP! as Kathy winced from fear. As I came back to my life, I saw Kathy taking a bite. As she chewed, I could hear the crunching of her tooth breaking which caused more teeth to fall out along with a few streams of blood. Tears profusely ran from under her eye mask as she whimpered in agony. I left a comment begging her to stop the feed and get help. Again, the feed stopped after my comment. I was now convinced that Kathy knew who I was, despite us being separated virtually. Nonetheless, I was content with her ending yet another bizarre ASMR mukbang stream. The comments continued after the stream. One room. I'm glad they stopped the stream, but I can only imagine what's happening to her off camera. As if I hadn't seen enough, the next live stream sent me over the edge. Kathy was dipping raw salmon into that famous red sauce and began tapping the bowl in a particular pattern. The comment section started blowing up as most viewers recognized her tapping as Morse code. She was allegedly signaling the word help, which really pissed me off. 
I rushed down the stairs and where I've kept Kathy and said, You ungrateful wench! I starve you every week, so you work up a hell of an appetite, and I provide a massive meal for you! Not to mention I help you keep your figure! Now you have the nerve to ask for help using Morse code! I made you famous, and this is how you repay me! <laughs> 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 Since that day, I've kept the channel up because I don't want anyone being suspicious of me. To all her fans, don't worry, I've been checking up on her, but no one's ever going to see her again. I hear now there's a cluster of theories that Kathy was being held against her will. Whether you believe that or not, no one will ever know what truly happened to her. Sincerely, Anonymous. The next story was inspired by the disturbing case of an Arkansas woman who will call Stacy for the sake of the story. The details revolving this particular case are so disturbing that the general public had a hard time coping with the events that went down. Here's what it looked like. You find the strangest things on the internet. Even though some trends are more on the strange side, we're all suckers to them in one way or the other. A few years ago, the ASMR trend infiltrated the internet causing new ASMR channels to appear by the minute. ASMR carries many subcategories including loud chewing, tapping long fingernails against different objects, and cutting soaps and sands. It all strangely relaxes the mind, and trust me when I say some people would kill for it. I personally find the sound of cutting meat to be soothing. Most people I know find this to be odd and would find the entire idea of ASMR to be irksome and absurd. I spent months binge watching meat cutting videos before I found a channel called Slash and Stacy. Stacy worked as a butcher and would do all kinds of meat cuts and deboning. The squelching sounds of flesh being cut, chopped, and the cracking of pearly smooth bones set my mind free of the daily grind. I grew to anticipate her new posts and would always be one of the first to watch her new videos. Every other day, Stacy would upload new content. The footage would show a close up of a knife slicing slowly into the meat of the day on a cutting board. Once a week she would do a live stream. She wouldn't say much beyond a greeting as we'd watch her slash away and enjoy the sound effects. All of her viewers loved her live streams the most, up until recently. As of late, her live videos would be interrupted by an old woman who would walk in and start dancing in front of the camera. This struck as odd to us all, including Stacy. She would get perturbed and cut the feed. After five minutes or so, she would always start a new stream and continue butchering as though nothing happened. Due to these interruptions, many people got fed up and began to unsubscribe. I thought it was unnecessary to blame Stacy for these rude interruptions, so I continued to support her content. It was a Friday night and I got a notification on my phone that Stacy had posted to her community post. It read, Hey Slashers! Thank you for being a huge support to my channel and allowing me to do what I love. Next week, I'm going live, and it's going to be a black screen. You guessed it, this is going to be a surprise. I'll be butchering an exotic meat, and if you guys can guess correctly, I'll pick four random people to do a personal meet and greet with. Good luck, Slashers, and I'll see you on the next video. This brought excitement among her followers, and they posted on Twitter and Instagram expressing their love for Stacy. The promotion was salvaging the channel, but subscriptions weren't improving. The day of the highly anticipated live stream came and I took an extended lunch at work so I could tune in. Hey Slashers, can you believe it? Today's the day! You're all gonna guess what I'm slashing today. And if you guess correctly, four lucky people win a free meet and greet with me! This is a special kind of meet that's quite rare, so listen closely and comment your guesses. Good luck Slashers! Stacy sat in front of the camera. The screen went black and I sat at my computer zoning out to the sweet sound of clean flesh being butchered. The comments started pouring in and everyone was throwing out every theory they could think of. I tried looking up exotic meats as I typed my input. The suggestions varied from ostrich fillets to beef sweetbread to wagyu to beaver and even goat sausage. Nobody was correct and the list of exotic meats was diminishing. The viewers, including myself, were eminently baffled and most accused her of scamming us. The number of viewers were disintegrating, and the comments shifted from guesses to people calling Stacy a scammer along with other colorful things. There was easily 1,600 people tuning in, and within minutes, I was the only viewer left. Despite what was happening, I felt pity on her. 
People fall on hard times and maybe she made a desperate call. I didn't want to assume the worst. Not to mention the sounds were especially soothing that day. Hello? Daniel? Hi Stacy. Big fan of your content. Thank you for sticking around. I don't know what's going on with your giveaway, but I really like what you're slashing today. It's very relaxing. You want me to show you what it is? Hell yeah. Stacy zoomed out the camera so it focused on her workstation. My stomach <gasps> dropped when a human corpse with no limbs laid across the table. I watched in silent disbelief as she grabbed the arms from a bucket and began dancing around with them, <laughs> laughing maniacally. Blood was dripping all over her face and down her body as I trembled. She grabbed a saw that was used for autopsies and cut into the skull of an old woman. The same old woman from before. Stacy pulled the scalp off the woman and looked at the brain the same way one would look at a juicy steak. I couldn't divert my eyes, even though she grabbed a large spoon and scooped the brains out onto a plate. She took a fork and plunged it into the tissue. Blood splurting everywhere, she removed a large chunk and shoved it into her mouth. The horrific spell I was under was broken when I heard the voice of my coworker Steve behind me. Dude, <gasps> what the hell are you watching? I was just trying to watch some ASMR. Pretty sure ASMR is supposed to relax you. You look like you just saw a ghost. I think I need to take the rest of the day off. C can you cover for me? Yeah, man, no problem. Thanks, man. I went into the bathroom and dove into a stall, spewing my guts out. <laughs> the image of Stacy shoving a large bite of human brain into her mouth was burned into my head. I was left in a state of complete shock. I informed my manager that I would need to go home early that day. I drove myself home and took a shower in hopes it would get my mind on something else. I laid down on my bed and looked at my phone to find a dozen notifications from YouTube. All of them were comments from Stacy from her live feed, all addressed to me. Daniel, you left so suddenly. I didn't get a chance to tell you that the rare, exotic meat was my own grandma. Hit me up so I can do a meet and greet with you. Needless to say, I didn't meet up with her. And I know what you're thinking. Why didn't I just call the cops? Logically, that would have been the thing to do. But when you're in shock, you're not thinking clearly. I had the worst headache and I just wanted to sleep it off. I unsubscribed and blocked her from every social media platform I followed her on. A few weeks had gone by and I stopped watching ASMR altogether. I found out that Stacy had never cut the live feed and someone else tuned in. They watched as she ate her grandmother's entire brain and filleted parts of her for cooking. They called the police and she was sent to a psych ward. I felt better knowing she was in a place where she couldn't hurt anyone anymore. I thought she'd forgotten all about me. Until I got a random phone call one day. Hello? Who is this? How did you get my number? Grandma wants you to eat her too. I've never been very successful with the ladies. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever been successful with much at all. I'm in my late 30s now, and I'm still working the same kind of construction jobs I was getting into after dropping out of high school. And I'm still unmarried and desperately single. I don't really know what it is. I think I'm an alright human as much as the next guy, and I actually make pretty decent money in my career. But maybe women see something in my face I'm not aware of that turns them off. Things just never seem to get very far with my attempts at romance. But I'll tell you, though, when things do get promising is when I get the most desperate. At least that's the case for me. My last fleeting hope went so horribly wrong in such a way that I never could have expected. Up until very recently, I've been playing the dating game with sheer numbers, knowing that my chances of connecting with any one woman are extremely slim. I've downloaded and scoured through just about every dating app that exists, at least the ones relevant to me, trying my odds with thousands and thousands of profiles and, every day, getting a little more desperate by my lack of success. But a few weeks ago, I thought I'd finally catch a break on this website called Plenty of Fish. I matched with a rather good-looking woman who appeared to be several years younger than me, but not too young for it to be weird or anything. However, I won't disclose the name of this individual, out of fear, more than anything else. At first, I was wary of being catfished, but the profile seemed pretty realistic, as did the conversation we had over text. 
And really, though I know it sounds cliche, it was her personality that really drew me in, more than her looks. We texted casually for a few days, slowly getting more and more into it, texting each other increasingly often, at work, at home, at the grocery store, whenever I could get the chance. <laughs> I tell you, there's nothing like the way your heart races when you see a message pop up on your phone from someone you're interested in. I don't think my nearly 40-year-old heart could feel that way anymore, but I guess living alone for so many years will make that happen. Eventually, we decided to take things to the next level and traded numbers so we could video chat. I couldn't tell you how happy I was to finally know for sure that I wasn't being catfished. We started calling each other every day for a little while, and it started to mess with me a little bit. I guess I may have been a little obsessive because I started to use the audio recording app I use for work-related conversations to record the conversations between me and this woman. I obviously didn't tell her I did that, but other than that, I feel I was pretty open and honest about myself and my feelings at the time. I hope this doesn't make you think I'm a loser or anything, but um, I work construction. Whoa, why would you be a loser for working construction? Just because you can handle yourself around the hard work that other boys would shy away from doesn't make you a loser. Whew, <laughs> I appreciate that a lot, I, I really do. You know, I I'm so glad we connected like this. To be honest, I've been missing companionship in my life for a very long time. It's very hard to come home and decompress after work when you live alone. I, I hope that doesn't make me sound desperate. Don't be afraid to share your feelings. They're all totally valid, and I'm also very happy to know you. If there's anything I can do to help you relax, just ask. You should know, I'm going to school for physiotherapy. I'm almost a professional. And I do ASMR videos on the side if you like that. Before that moment, I've never heard of ASMR, but when I asked her to explain it to me and she said she'd be softly whispering into my ears with comforting words, I was 100% on board. The very next night after work, I asked her to perform some ASMR. She agreed, telling me it would be best if I got as comfortable as possible, as though I was about to go to sleep for the night. I made sure that I was recording the conversation, as I was deeply intrigued by what might come out of this intimate whispering. Then I put in some headphones I found laying around my house, laid down, and opened up my ears to this woman. I'll admit, I was rather surprised at first. The way she'd explained it to me, I, I thought she'd be talking, but what she was actually doing was not English at all, nor any other language I could even recognize. It was all just weird gibberish that kept repeating itself in all different tones and stuff. Strange sounds she made with her mouth like someone who was very absent-mindedly beatboxing. Nonetheless, it was soothing in some way. I know it was weird, but I've never heard ASMR before, and I really didn't want to offend her, so I just accepted the weirdness of it and tried to appreciate it. Very soon, I got so relaxed that I started drifting off to sleep. I've never gotten to sleep that fast before, nor have I ever entered such a deep sleep within so little time. I was just about to think that this ASMR stuff was really working, when things started going awry. As I was floating in some sort of dream state, I began to see terrible, disturbing visions. It's hard to describe. It was like a demented light show of some demonic ritual I was being subjected to. Like all my happy thoughts were being replaced by all the horrors of the world. I tried to wake up, but I couldn't. It was like I could see my bedroom, but I couldn't move my body at all. Then, at the foot of my bed, a human figure appeared. A woman, but a twisted woman, like one of those demon girls from The Ring or The Grudge. She spoke, but she didn't speak any human language. She repeated the same sounds that had been made by that woman, the same sounds that had put me to sleep and left me in this state. The demon girl climbed onto my bed, then on top of me, pinning down my chest with unreal weight as she opened her rotting mouth and began making some insidious growling noise. She wrapped her broken fingers around my neck and started to squeeze. For so long, I couldn't move. 
only until I was sure that I was moments away from death was I able to snap out of the trance. <gasps> I jumped free of my slumber, having no idea how long I had been like that. My phone was dead, and there were no lights on. I tried to stand, only to find that my head was both spinning and throbbing in pain, like I was drunk, like I downed a whole bottle of whiskey and then smashed it over my head. I spent several minutes just catching my breath and regaining my balance, trying to wrap my mind around what had just happened. Eventually, I decided to play back the recording I'd made. I plugged in my phone and booted it back up. The audio file was right there, and hours long. I pressed play and listened in cautiously, just the same unsettling gibberish as before, repeating itself for hours. I had no idea how anyone could keep up such repetition for so long, but it didn't explain what had happened. I began to theorize that I had been psychologically infiltrated by some subliminal messaging, so I plugged my phone into my computer and uploaded the file into an audio editing software. The first thing I did was reverse it, like they used to do with controversial records back in the day. I was floored immediately. Somehow, what was nothing but meaningless mouth sounds before came to form words when played in reverse. I warn you that listening to this audio could potentially cause you to have an episode like the one I had, but I offer up this clip for those who are curious. And if you're wondering, I can't find the woman anymore. She blocked me, and I think maybe she was never real in the first place. His love is grand. His love is pure. But one thing's for sure, his love for the devil will outweigh any love he possesses in this world. I've since never dabbled in any dating apps and always cringe every time I see an ASMR mukbang video pop up in my recommended page. Hello there, back with another mukbang video. Anyway, who wants to see me devour all this good good in a blink of an eye? Uh.